Some new reports out of the Olympics claim the athletes are complaining of the conditions in Chinese isolation hotels after dozens of Olympians were confined after testing positive for COVID. The rooms are said to be too small for the athletes to exercise. Valeria Vasnetsova, uh, a Russian biathlete, uploaded this photo and said she served this three times a day for five days straight leaving her emaciated, quote, with bones sticking out. A Polish skater complained after being repeatedly taken to the isolation camps over and over again because of unclear COVID tests. There are currently dozens of athletes in isolation. One of Finland's best hockey players has been in an isolation facility for 18 days. Under China's rules, people can only leave isolation after returning two negative PCR tests taken 24 hours apart. Yeah, this sounds like hell on earth. Uh, the conditions in the quarantine areas are terrible. Um, yeah, I, man, I. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it's like devastating, right? As an Olympian, you, you've trained and trained and trained for this moment. Yeah. And you get there and then the worst thing possible happens to you. You test positive for COVID. And it's not, it's not um, like something you can avoid, right? It's, I mean, it's, uh, they're, Omicron is, I'm sure, just as contagious there as it was here. Like, it's just, yeah. a, it's just a roll of the dice whether you're going to test positive or not. Yes. It really yeah. sucks. So then like, they get taken away to these isolation hotels, and that yeah. sucks on top of it. Right. right? So, th so then instead of competing in the Olympics, you're in this, like, squalid, miserable holding area. And China, yeah. can't, China can't afford to feed these athletes and give them, give them an area where they can exercise in? Like... That's absurd. They're there for the Olympics. Well, like they need to be, they need they need yeah. the caloric intake that yeah. that an Olympic athlete requires, and they, and they need the ability to to train, unless you're going to give unfair advantage to you know other athletes, or unless they're not able to compete anymore. I mean, it could be then, that. Then they're let them like, go home. If yeah, they're not, like, yeah, just send them home. Oh, no, you can't. They, they're not going to stick you on a plane if right. you got COVID. <laughs> right? <Yes. laughs> I mean, we wouldn't take them. Like, <laughs> 18, 18 right? days? Yeah. Well, that person just is not returning a negative test, it seems like, because they have to get two within 24 hours. So if they are not returning, right. and, and yeah, that's, I mean, I And they the could be completely that, you know, healthy and not contagious, yeah. and still re but we're still returning a positive test because, you know, right. it's yeah. the test is different for everybody. Some people get unlucky. You know, you could have the dead virus particles, et cetera. Man, it I sounds. had family testing for 20 days positive at, from a COVID infection. So Oof. I think it can last three weeks, especially when you're testing this often. And, you know, um, so I'm sure it's not. I, I mean, look, like I, I feel really bad for these Olympians. I feel terrible for them that they've trained and trained and trained and then they get there and this happens. I mean, this is literally a worst nightmare scenario, right? Besides like breaking your leg. I think that would be probably worse. But I mean, this is like right up there. And then you are in these quarantine and we don't know exactly what the quarantine conditions are really for people. I know that in Australia, people were doing video and they were showing and it wasn't, you know, for for those that tested positive and were taken to their quarantine camps, it didn't look good. Um, some are isolated in hotel rooms, you know, so, I, you know, it's um, again, I think it calls into question, I think the kind of the the ethics or the whether or not we really want to go down this road. And many people have been calling for this, even here in, in the state, saying that we should be having quarantine facilities, you know, hotels or something, where when people test positive, they get whisked away to this, um, you know, but some only few societies have actually implemented this, Australia and yeah. China. I don't know if there've been others. Sounds terrifying. And the Australians in there have to watch Chinese language uh, television probably in their hotel room. The only thing you got is a TV and it's Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, I don't know. It's, like, well, it seems like me. they must have cell phones or something, right? She's able to post. Oh, there food. you go. Yeah. yeah. Thank the CCP for cell phones. Whatever, whatever the CCP is allowing through. To yeah, the, you're not going <laughs> to do any to research on Tiananmen Square while you're there. <laughs> well, another viral image of the game shows the Olympic freestyle skiing course in the middle of a nuclear power plant. <laughs> The mainstream media has been ignoring these ugly realities of the quarantine camps in exchange for the Olympic Village, which boasts robotic cooks to mitigate disease. There's that. Uh, so <laughs> My talk at the, the table is the so-called Robo Noodles being served in the Winter Olympics. Robo um, so Robo Noodles, here's what it is. Uh, they're robotic cooks, and they're meant to minimize the spread of COVID-19 but they also save on manpower and they improve efficiency of the meal. So they can cook. We're talking about hamburgers, 
boil rice, Whoa. noodles, um, and also they double as bartenders. <laughs> Not only was that pro-China propaganda, that was pro-robot propaganda. <laughs> well, it's definitely an automated society. I mean, look, you know, China's doing the best that they can, I think, to host the Olympics during COVID, especially. I I'm actually surprised they even went through with hosting the Olympics, considering how closed they've been and how strict they've been with COVID. Um, so I guess it's no surprise then that they would they would resort to, you know, robot cooks in order to stop the spread. Although I don't know if that's how you catch COVID. I mean, do you get it in your food? Like that? I mean, is your burger going to give well, you I guess COVID? They mean, I guess they mean they're keeping the, the waiter uh, away in the, away from you. But, but oh, yeah, I see. But I went, I went to one of these robot coffee shops in San Francisco once. It's cr the creepiest thing ever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and, I, and I get that automation, you know, everything we have now was creepy to people 50 years ago. But something just extra creepy about that. Although yeah. I will say, if I were an Olympic athlete, um, I would absolutely want the robot to be delivering me <laughs> my food because I wouldn't want to end up in a quarantine camp. I mean, mm -hmm. look, like I get, like I said, you've trained your whole life for this. The last thing you want is somebody to give you COVID. So I'm sure the athletes are appreciative saying like, thank goodness, I want to limit my exposure to anybody. I'm sure they're also grateful that, you know, if you're a COVID free athlete, you're grateful that the COVID positive athletes are being taken away to some quarantine place so that they don't spread it to you because the last thing you want is for you to not be able to compete for and also this, so you don't have to compete against moment. them then and then there's there, that there goes right? the best hockey player <laughs> i wonder if so there's can, any if there's any oh i'm starting to feel a, a cough coming on where's the uh you know where's the the russian uh, team or whatever right, yeah. Well, yeah the one where it's like the the inconclusive test it's like hmm who are the judges that <laughs> yeah, were that deeming this one inconclusive <laughs> i yeah. My, my, the conspiracy mind is working on, on this because there's nothing more corrupt in the world than the Olympics. Yeah, uh, I, start to finish. Not, not a huge fan of the Olympics personally. I mean, it combines like the two things I like the least, sports and like nationalism. <laughs> so I'm not a big fan. I actually, I'm appreciating that this year it's okay to kind of be against them because it's, you know, the it's Chinese the boycott. Government. There you go. All right. So, but I would have been boycotting them anyway because I don't care. Excellent. Well, we will have more rising right after this.